Please welcome Dr. Hanan Balki, Assistant Director General for AMR Resistance, WHO. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, just to check, can you all hear me very well? Yes, we hear and see you very well. Welcome to Uppsala Health Summit. Thank you very much. You've brought me back some memories because uh, with auto cars, maybe 12, 13 years ago, I had a picture in front of the university. It was a great pleasure those days to be part of uh, React. So it's, it's a true honor for me to be with you here today. Thank you for the invite. Um, dear colleagues, I would like to start by thanking the organizers, Uppsala University, Swedish University of Agriculture Sciences, Uppsala Country Co uh, County Council, Uppsala City Council, and World Class Uppsala for a fascinating four-day conference dedicated to the central role that behavior change plays in how we manage AMR. AMR is the silent pandemic, the silent tsunami that has been around for quite some time and will continue to be around uh, to threat human lives for decades to come. It's an unfortunate statement, yet I do have to voice it. I'm very much appreciative to the high level of attention given to this meeting by the presence of Her Royal Highness, Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden, who has been a long-term ambassador for the Sustainable Development Goals. Her support speaks to the recognition that AMR threatens to undermine achievement of so many of the SDGs. This meeting has been noticed for the rich and diverse agenda and the high caliber of speakers who have joined from a wide range of disciplines, infectious diseases, veterinary health, ecology, behavioral sciences, anthropology, nursing, livestock, and I think I'm mentioning only a few. The complexity of this topic has been known to those of us who are deeply engaged into it, but the wider range of stakeholders whom behavior are central to this response may not be so clear on our mandates. The Global Action Plan on AMR is founded on the principle of whole of society, engagement to promote behavior change by improving awareness and understanding. But we need to go further using the range of behavioral insights to understand why people make the choices they do and what the barriers are to change those behaviors. It is not simply a matter of providing the information. Let us not forget that we are in still in the midst of an unfortunate pandemic that continues to spread the new variants on the inappropriate use of antimicrobial agents around the world. Recent behavioral insight survey from nine countries in the European region indicate high percentage of people, up to 46%, reporting the usage of antibiotics to prevent and to treat COVID, knowing that 90% do not have the infection. Shortages of antibiotics are being record, uh, reported from many countries anecdotally due to their overuse from the pandemic. From the WHO perspective, we're committed to behavior change in all public health programs. The World Health Organization is committed to making behavior change a key component of its policies and programs for major health challenges broadening the scope to include behavioral insights, looking at people's behavior through the application of behavioral and social sciences, anthropology, cognitive scientists, uh, sciences uh, and psychology, among others, to identify factors and biases that influence behavior. Addressing behavior of all people, consumers, patients, healthcare providers, prescribers, dispensers, why people take the decisions they do and how those decisions influence other factors and other decisions. So a new behavior, a behavior insights team has been established at HQ for uh, WHO. Further, in July 2020, the DG, Dr. Tedros, announced the establishment of a technical advisory group of experts on behavioral insights and sciences for health to improve policies and programs, inform the design of innovative processes and practices, help reframe and improve communications, identify the need for nudges to overcome biases and barriers, or ensure that products and services are designed keeping users need in mind. So once again, before I close, I would like to say that I very much enjoyed the summary of the different workshops 
that really covered almost all of the aspects relevant to uh, antimicrobial resistance, from pediatrics to IPC to animal biosecurity to the environment to the pharmaceutical chain. And I was very impressed on how behavioral science was actually incorporated in this conference to include areas other than that is just relevant to the human behavioral practices. But you went really beyond uh, that aspect, and that is very impressive. I would also like to assure you that within the AMR division that has been established uh, only, uh, well, only two years ago, but in the middle of this pandemic, for which I am the Assistant Director General for, we have also uh, addressed many of the areas that you have talked about today, and we will uh, need to uh, focus on this collaborative work uh, with you and partners around the world to move the agenda forward. As a simple example, we're working very hard on developing a standardized curriculum for mid and low income countries to institute for infection prevention and control as a specialty, and to work with academia around the world to try to understand how can we create a career path that will sustain uh, health workers in this specific field to move forward. We're also doing major efforts in the surveillance program, GLASS, to understand how, I, how can we further understand the burden of the disease through innovative methodologies of surveillance, through surveys, to understand even if there are snapshots of burden of certain specific pathogens and the multidrug resistance that exists among these pathogens. We're also working very hard to, to try to uh, develop a more sustainable uh, funding uh, process for antimicrobial agenda uh, globally. We are also... Um, uh, working with the uh, newly established WHO Academy and trying to uh, use that platform to educate as many individuals uh, who are needed in this field as possible. As someone who's a pediatrician, an infection control person, and very keen on medical education and education in general, I think your platform today has really touched on many, many aspects of the very complex topic of antimicrobial resistance. And I would like to thank you very much for all of your efforts, for the great organization and uh, collaborative work. And I would like to thank you for inviting me to give these closing remarks. Thank you very much and back to you. Thank you, Dr. Hanan Balki from the World Health Organization.